Hi and welcome, I'm Tommy Host and this is the Dropcast Movie Poster Podcast. This format is part of the Instagram blog Drop and you can find us under at DropMakeOfficial. We do reviews, news and interviews that all have to do with the film business. And in this show we will talk about the art you can see on the left and also talk on a closer look about The Little Droidsmith aka Babu Freak by um, Ruiz Burgos who is a great artist from Spain and he did a lot of work with Bottleneck already and I, as you can see in the back here there's the Baby Yoda uh, which is also by him. So stay tuned and follow along on our uh, Instagram blog at DropMakeOfficial or check out the YouTube version where you have everything in one place. Now let's get started. And our first piece we're going to look at is Cinder Called Cinderella by George Kaltsudas, which is a release by Bottleneck Gallery and it's part of a two, a two series. The other one we're going to see, it's Maleficent. I'm not going to take that away already, but um, this is a very Disney centered art piece where you can see which is like kept beautiful and white has all as the, as the white background has all a white peach kind of color theme which is very cool and I think it will look very good in every little kid's room um, around the world. So uh, if you want to pick up some uh, cool art by a cool artist um, then this would be a good choice for your kid's room. And as I mentioned already the other one from this series is the Maleficent piece which is also very cool. I like the the character uh, design which is very um, very close to the to the original animations as you can see here and uh, it has, has also like the the dynamic of the piece i love that that, that it goes beyond this kind of frame he set himself with the with the, in the bottom here and that it looks almost like a tree rooted uh, that goes up which is like a cool thing for um for this kind of art piece and everybody's looking at maleficent which is really cool and i really like this art piece and it would also i think go along with in your kid's room but could be the source of nightmare as well since maleficent is very um or seems dangerous and uh maybe not not that suitable for a little kid's room but parents choice i'd say <laughs> Okay, the third one we are going to talk about is Leo, which is, has also a cool frame, I would say here. It's this like this kind of unfinished art piece frame. And uh, this is by uh, Gary Cleary or Jerry Cleary. And um, he, uh, I, I wish, I, I don't know, I, I, I tried to find out, but I didn't find anything on uh, if he did the other turtles as well. But this is also released by Bottleneck Gallery and it has Leo here very uh, kind of depressed in a way. And I think it's, it's a very cool piece. It's something different. And I like, um, because Leo is like, like the thinking guy of, of the turtles, I'd say. He's not uh, the kawabunga jump in guy, but um, that's, that's why I like this piece. And he also looks a little bit like a, like a boxer. Like he's uh, like the round is over. He's in this corner and um, yeah, contemplating what to do next. And uh, I think it's a very cool piece and um, more artistic than I would say pop cultural, but very cool. The next one we're going to look at is uh, a very cool one by Cliff Cramp. He does a lot of cool illustrations. And uh, this one is, as the most of you probably would have uh, already seen, is Mordor. And uh, he did some, some more artwork for uh, this Lord of the Rings series. I think it's two or three more. And he did before, I think a couple of weeks back or a month back or so, he did, I think, the, 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 the Balrog. Uh, as well and uh, yeah this is a very cool cool piece i really like this landscape view of middle earth because middle earth has like um, when it comes for example to like looking at new zealand and stuff like that they have a lot of cool architecture which is not um appreciated enough i'd say and uh, when you look at the movie especially uh peter jackson used a lot of uh, that architecture and this cinematography to put these landscapes in and i think Clim cliff Cr uh, cramp capture this very well so check him out as well and our next piece goes into the star wars section may the fourth uh, has just been over but this one is a piece by pablo Oliveira, and this is the high noon foil variant there are different i think three or three different versions 
uh, released by bottleneck as well and i think the foil version would look really cool with his best car armor and um i i had like the last times so i talked about pablo Rivera, it was like this landscape um art he did for bottleneck on lord of the rings for example but also the um neo tokyo for akira and I think this one, he knocks out of the park as well. If you really like the, the show, The Mandalorian, uh, and you are in for the for The Mandalorians, not only for uh, Baby Yoda, um, this piece would make a cool add to your collection. The next one is uh, by artist Anne Bambi. We talked about her last time in the release, I think, or the, the time before. Uh, she did the Wonder Woman pieces, and uh, now she continued with a Joker one and also a Harley Quinn one, which I did not feature because I really love this Joker one. It's a really cool piece, and um, she, she's uh, she's a good artist. Um, and she, I hope I hope to get her on the show at some point and talk about her art. And this piece, I think, is very cool because it's from the beginning of the uh, movie and it captures the different perspective, I'd say, very well. And um, yeah, one of my favorite scenes right at the beginning. And the next one is The Big Lebowski. I mean, um, a lot of people have this one as their favorite movie. And um, this one was not released by Bottleneck Gallery. Um, it, it was released by Mondo. And it captures this, the spirit of uh, the big, uh, the dude in this case, the Big Lebowski, very well. And it has like the bowling here in the back and stuff like that. So it's a very, very cool piece. And uh, I, I like the color scheme with the, with the reds in the carpet and onto the rope here and like even the background and all of that. And the smoke of a cigarette in here. I love this piece very well. I also like this this unfinished style here at the at the bottom, and yeah, very very cool art by uh, didn't even name the artist. I'm sorry, Mark Espinal, and he's a very cool artist. I checked his art out, uh, so do that also as well as I include all the um, all the information at the bottom there, and uh, yeah, very cool stuff. I really enjoyed. Um, enjoyed this piece, and I think it's still available on man uh, on Mondo. Um, so head over to Mondo Tees and check it out. The next one, also released by Mondo, is this piece here. It's part of the Batman animated series. It's called Dreams in Darkness, and it's created by Phantom City Creative. Um, we had them on before, I think, or I mean, they were on the Greg Ruth podcast with uh, the Godzilla post that we talked about. And um, yeah, this piece is, I think, the, the, the shape of this kind of cloud or like stench you could even say that hangs over batman it's very joker shaped and it has like all the villains in there and um yeah it's like a like yeah as it says dreams in darkness like it's a nightmare and i think the color scheme is picked very well there's also a variant but i like i think there's a regular i think this one is better in my opinion but um i i, I it's a really interesting piece and i think the batman animated series is one of the best um Batman version um, out there. So if you haven't seen it, uh, it's part was part of my youth. So <laughs> maybe yours as well. But uh, check it out as well. It's a cool series, and this print goes along very well. So head over to Mondo and see if you can get it or check the aftermarket. And another Mondo piece we're going to talk about is something different because I try to like sometimes do something different. And uh, this one is a T-shirt series for. Um, those two guys, Bill and Ted, and yeah, their incredible journey. It's uh, this, this, the first one is called The Long Fall to Hell, and it's uh, by, uh, by Matt Ryan Tobin. He designed all, this, uh, all the stuff that went on the shirts. And um, I think this is a very cool, a very cool way to have um, a movie or like an iconic scene from the movie on the post, uh, on, uh, not on the poster, see, that's the thing, on the shirt. And um, I really like what he what he has done there. Um, we talked about um, the Hunter, um, or Hunters, the TV show uh, before, that was also by him. And yeah, this piece is really cool. And let me show you the other ones. I also like this one as well, uh, Be Excellent to Each Other, which is a cool statement to have on a shirt. And it comes from this reference from the movie, very cool. And also this one here, The Wild Stallions, very nice choice, even with the cool with the horse <laughs> on the front and the wild stallions on the back. Um, really cool design, and I really like this for the movie. 
And our last piece is by none other than Raid 71. It's Guardians of the Galaxy, um, the first the first uh, volume one uh, version. And uh, we had him on for the uh, for the, our last release show with the Hey Joe poster for Blade Runner. And uh, in his similar fashion with the crazy colors, they did this nice screen print for gray matter art. And uh, it turned out very well, I think. And um, for Guardians of the Galaxy, fa Galaxy fans, I think it's a must. So check into that. It's, it's very worth your time to look at this great poster. And um, yeah, I think that is all for this release section. And now we can go over and talk to Rhys Burgos about Babu Frick, the little droid smith. Um, this is the poster again. Yeah, so you have that already in advance. And we will look at the different stages, um, how that poster was made and how it came about. And yeah, I think it's a really good piece. I can't wait to have it in here. I can pair with this little guy over there. So yeah, let me let me know what you think about the art. Um, maybe I can show you or I showed you something new uh, that you can um, add to your Instagram account and look at the art and also check out um, the stuff on the aftermarket if there is uh, no availability anymore. OK, now over to Ruiz Burgos. How are you doing, my man? Hi, I'm good. I'm happy to be here. Uh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's a pleasure to have you. Um, we talked about it that uh, um, a language barrier could be, so we try to uh, take it slow. But we really, really want to know how you made this piece I'm um, going to present. I talked about, because you can see in the back here, I talked about it on, on a different show about the Baby Yoda one. And um, today we are going to talk about a new piece you did with Bottleneck. It is the Babu Freak, the little droid smith version I, sh I all the people can see it now this is the regular version that uh, was released by bottleneck uh, do you know how what kind of run it was how uh, big it was run a, it? a limited run yeah but I, but how how many oops oh uh, i can't remember the exactly the in the number i i think it was like uh 300 yeah, uh, something like uh, 200 225 or so somewhere around there but yeah it was so, yeah. it was a very limited run and uh, it was sold out quick it was sold out very quick yeah a couple of days or something like that i think it was even on the first day wasn't it no it wasn't in the first day uh, it wasn't it, it was sold out in the second day but okay yeah. but close enough i mean yeah, he's also a yeah. very cute guy and i heard about because because we talked about it um uh a little bit earlier because you can see in the back here uh by rios he has a a lot of hot toys, sideshow collectibles, figures in the back. And yeah. I read the other day that uh, people are, um, because I'm in a group on Facebook, and they want also a Bubble Freak life-size figure. Yeah, I can totally understand. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone loves Bubble Freak. <laughs> okay. So uh, how, how... Um, how how did this happen? I'm going to uh, put in the, the child for a second here. This is a, a sketch version. Um, because this, the sketch version, which, uh, which part of the process was this uh, when the child, when you did the child? Uh, I painted the child uh, last Christmas. Mm -hmm. uh, the net uh, sent me an email. Um, they asked for a uh, for a baby Yoda piece. Uh, I asked them for for mm -hmm. when because we are in Christmas right now. I'm not working, and they told me. Uh, we need it for last week, so, <laughs> so it need to be right now. So yeah, I I, I try to to work pretty fast in, in a sketch. I send them two sketches. This is mm -hmm. the, the first one I, I did. Um, they love it, uh, them both, so they send both the sketches to uh, Lucasfilm. Or, well, to Acme Archives, who, mm -hmm. and they are uh, the intermediary of, of the designer. Um, and yeah, the, both of them was abroad. So I painted this one because Bottleneck wanted uh, this piece uh, before the other one. But the other one is finished and it's approved too. And it's going to be released in the future. I don't know when. So mm -hmm. I'm very happy because they, they asked me for one. I did two. Um, they both are going to be released. So yeah, it's great. Mm -hmm. how, uh, how... That, uh, like a month later, 
uh, when episode nine was released and yeah. everyone was loving Babu Freak, they um, they sent exactly. me an email with the idea of making a Babu Freak piece in the same uh, size and kind of design uh, to yeah. make them look like a couple. So. I, yeah, I, it's, yeah. Why not? It turned out very great. And uh, by the way, um, I read an article that uh, Steven Spielberg is the reason why Babu Frick was in the movie. I heard that J.J. I... Abrams cut Babu Frick out, and uh, Steven Spielberg watched this cut and he was like, "Where's Babu Frick?" So he was back in the movie, and <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. he stole the <laughs> he stole the film completely. I, I love it here. I love the character. Uh, when when they uh, asking me for the piece. Uh, I had just a few images of him uh, as reference because uh, the movie was still on on, on Cedars. So yeah. I asked him for uh, some reference and they asked to Lucasfilm and they sent mm -hmm. uh, a few pictures of, of the actual puppet. Oh, cool. Yeah, they was really cool with a lot of uh, watermarks with Lucasfilm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all of that. But yeah, it was really cool to, to be able to see uh, all the details in the actual puppet. It's really That's cool. That's very great. Did you did did you watch the extras yet? I mean, they have they have like a long no. like documentary behind the scene one on the DVD. Yeah, three hours uh, of documentary or something like that. I, I still yeah. haven't seen it. Okay, maybe it's in there. I'm looking forward. I haven't seen it yet either, but I'm uh, definitely gonna watch it and check it out and. Uh, let the people know if it's in there. Um, I'm gonna pull up your your first sketch you did. The the is it a pencil drawing or a digital pencil no, drawing? It's, it's all digital. In okay. in this kind of uh, pieces I do for galleries or mm -hmm. something like that, it's always digital because uh, well I, I can't do uh, this kind of piece uh, in traditional. I'm not a a, a good traditional painter. I can mm -hmm. paint, but I'm not good. Um, that, that's I, funny. I, I can do the uh, the pencils, of course, but uh, when when you scan them and put in, in them to into Photoshop and mm -hmm. you start working on them, at the end it's a lot of time you don't need to spend because you you need to rework the all okay. the in the computer, so it's easier uh, for me to do it directly in the computer. Oh, okay, I see. Because like um, I talked to Greg Ruth the other day, and he said he basically never does anything on Photoshop. He doesn't even. He basically just knows the basics to do that. It's the pencil master. Yeah, he's he's very I, great. I, yeah, I think he's the best in in pencil work. His yeah. house uh, is, is inspirational as always. Yeah, he's he's a very great guy to talk to. So look forward for that. Um, it's coming out on May first, or it came out on May first because this. Uh, this section is going to be uh, released one week after, um, but yeah, he's uh, it's it's, it's going to be a good talk. We, we talked for one and a half hours, so it was very long. <laughs> a lot. He, uh, basically, I, I didn't have to do anything. He, I asked him questions, and he just kept talking, talking, talking. Yeah. <laughs> I can do the same because my face is not that good. <laughs> Don't worry, you're doing very good. Um, uh, I'm an English teacher. I can tell you, you're doing very good. Oh, that's great! <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna pull up uh, the, the the next step of the um, Babu Frick evolution, uh, as you could say. Um, now you fill in with the colors. How how did you decide on that? Did you keep it basically exactly as um, as the, the the images you had, or did you change up a little bit? I usually, uh, if, if you see the the that. Uh, that moment, the process, uh, that image, and the previous sketch and the final one, you can see difference because uh, the, the piece is always in evolution, you know? Uh, you start uh, trying to uh, be close to, to the original, uh, but sometimes you need to change things to make the, the image more appealing or, you know, uh, more beautiful. So. It's a mix of things. I, I'm I'm a realistic uh, painter. I always try to mm -hmm. to be close to to the original, but I don't want it to be exactly the same as, uh, as the picture is because you you have the the, the screen the the you know the, the movies uh, still you you don't need to mm -hmm. copy exactly the same. You need to 
interpret uh, in, in in a way, you know. Yeah. And it's a mix of things, you know. You uh, put things from just from you because you think it looks better that way. Um, but the bas- the basis of of the image is it's the, yeah, the, the the movie still basically. Mm-hmm. I mean, when you, um, I, I just showed the, 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 the little mechanic that the second, ev- the third evolution now that when you filled in the colors and um, had the bottom part edited and your, your, your signature is already on it. And then uh, I'm, to compared to the last one, I think both pieces, the Baby Yoda and uh, Babu Frick one, they look really lifelike. Is, is, yeah. that, <laughs> is, is that what you were going for also? Yeah, I always try to to have them uh, this this life, uh, uh, you know, the the feeling of of, of life in, in the character, mm-hmm. and no matter if it is a puppet or a creature or an actor, you you need to make him look like a life, because you know, otherwise uh, you you look at him and, and you see a puppet, yeah. <laughs> not a character. Um, how do you how to create uh, when, when you create that? How do you use um, all the like which kind of techniques do you use in Photoshop? Is it is it just one sort of uh, sort of brush you use, or how are you working? I, usually, I use just one brush to to do all the piece, including the the line art. I use oh. the same brush. I have a brush that. Uh, imitate uh, pretty cool uh, traditional brushes. Mm-hmm. Um, if you put this brush really small, it looks almost like pencils. So mm-hmm. I use the same for both uh, line and color. And the, the, when the main art is uh, finished, sometimes I use other uh, specific uh, brushes to do effects like uh, you, you can see all the bottom of, of the images. Mm-hmm. This brush is like, um, uh, you know, um, oleum or uh, this this kind of textures, uh, okay, uh, yeah. fabric textures, or this kind of application. I, I do them with another or two brushes, but I use one, two, or three brushes in, in a piece. That's all, mm-hmm. uh, I never go f- for more brushes because some people use a lot of brushes and mm-hmm. use a silhouette. And it's cool. It's, you know, it's not bad, of course, but I, I just can't do it. Uh, I, I, I'm the, the same with the traditional. I'm using uh, one or two pencils and mm-hmm. maybe one ink, and that's all, <laughs> because I can uh, I, I can work with a lot of things. Mm-hmm. Uh, and- I mean, since since you're the the best six fan arts uh, maker out right now, <laughs> with all those challenges, oh, um, <laughs> is, is it, are you do, are you doing those with the hand or are you doing this all digital as well? No, they are all digital. All digital. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's, it's the same with uh, it's exactly the same technique uh, mm-hmm. in this pieces of uh, Babu and the child, just uh, quicker, a lot of quicker. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah. I maybe spend four days or five days doing these pieces. Um, with the six funnel challenge, mm-hmm. I made each one of them in one hour or two. Okay, cool. It's, it's a big difference. Yeah, I think I think I because uh, uh, I, I got a friend of mine. He has connections to Netflix, so maybe I should talk to them that you make all of the character posters <laughs> for all the uh, 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 La Casa de Papal. Um, series that, that would be great yeah. because i really loved your tokyo as i told you before and uh, yeah it, it really reminded reminded me of the series and that i would just watch it and you just made that and that was kind of cool <laughs> thank you it would be awesome of course um, is there going to be in the future is there going to be any um a piece that uh, others proves that you will come out with or is it just the this the the, the limited series that came out with bottleneck uh, I don't know. Uh, actually, right now I, I I did another Star Wars pieces uh, for Bottleneck, mm-hmm. and it's going to be released that for sure. But after that, I, I really don't know if we are okay. going to do other pieces. Uh, a, a few months ago, I did a Princess Leia uh, poster for them, uh, mm-hmm. a big one, uh, um, a big poster. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, 
I, I love the idea of uh, making three, uh, three posters with maybe three layers or uh, three different characters, mm -hmm. one uh, for each movie of the original trilogy. Yeah. Um, they said, yeah, of course, why not? Not, not the original trilogy, all the saga. <laughs> I said, well, <laughs> we'll see. So, yeah, but I probably uh, work in, in a few more pieces of mm -hmm. uh, Star Wars with them, with Bottleneck. Um, okay, can I tell you I hate you right now? Because that's where all my money goes. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's cool. <laughs> it's great for me. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, but that, that's the idea. But I, I, I still don't know. I don't have uh, specific plans for, for making that in, in the next... Okay or months or, or even in this year i don't know okay. but still still um, I, I, I can wait <laughs> yeah. i will do a, a, a few of the things with bottleneck mm. but it's not a star wars related or the life um i, I can't wait to see them uh, release it because uh, one of them is already finished but mm. this things always takes their time so I, I need to be patient too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I understand. So, okay, before we are finished, I just want to um, have a short movie review from you. What did you like about Star Wars 9? What didn't you like? And how would you rate the movie on a scale from 0 to 10? Okay. <laughs> I like the movie. Uh, I, I know a lot of people uh, hate the, the, the movie or oh, the whole... Uh, sequel trilogy and mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not like that i i think it's not the best star wars movie that's it's, true it's not the worst either um mm -hmm. yeah I, I enjoyed it uh, it yeah it has a, a few points uh, that didn't work it uh, very well it's, it's storytelling has a lot of problems yeah did you did you have any chance to read the uh, colin trevor roll script no, uh, I, I didn't read it. I I, I, I have seen it uh, around there in, in, in the net, but I, I didn't read it. Yeah, I think there's a cartoon version. Somebody made a cartoon version and with concept art, like a, like a 10, 15 minute video. I'll find it maybe later when we're done here, but uh, I'm not showing it to you. And uh, they did that and uh, they incorporated the whole script. And I think you get a good glimpse of the story. And I really enjoyed it. I wish they would have made that movie. You know, uh, maybe the script is better, but I I hated uh, Jurassic World, so I don't want <laughs> Trevor Rowe to to make a Star Wars movie. <laughs> I, I, I don't think he's not bad. He's not bad, but we, maybe we could have uh, been in a yeah, it could it could have been better. We never know. <laughs> exactly, we will never know. We can only dream. <laughs> Even if, if the script is better, uh, the movie, uh, you, you don't know if the movie could have been that better. That's because true. At the end, the movie is not uh, the same you read in the script or, or the same that the director wants to do. Mm. It's a, a huge committee of, of businessmen deciding what to do every day, and the movie uh, exactly. changed <laughs> a, a lot of times. Yeah. And it ends. So, uh, you never know. We have, exactly. we have what we have, and um, I'm happy with it. Uh, I, I enjoyed it uh, most of the movie. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very entertaining. It's it's the the main reason because I like Star Wars. They are just uh, silly sci-fi adventure movies, and that's that's a cool part of of Star Wars. That's always it was Star Wars. It hasn't mm. be other thing. Um, I love it. it uh, I love the characters. I love it, Bubble Freak, of course. Yeah. But I, the rest of the character, I, I, I love uh, Kylo Ren. I love Rey. Oh, uh, yeah. I love it to see the the, the old ones uh, returning uh, to, to their characters. It was really cool. Um, yeah, they, they, they are really cool. You know. Okay. Uh, then, how would you rate the movie on a scale from zero to ten? Oh, from zero to ten, I will say maybe a six. All right, sounds good. I think that's that's where I'm right about now as well. I started out as an eight, I think, and then it got got every time I watched it because I watched it in the first week four times, and oh. it got 
I, I still have uh, I, I just seen the movie one time in, in theaters and I still didn't see it again. I, I'm curious uh, to see it again because you know yeah. the, the first time you you want to see a lot of things. You have your mm-hmm. expectation and, yeah. and it's very different. The second one, you know what you are going to see, mm-hmm. so you usually can uh, you can enjoy it better and, and you can see it yeah. in in other exactly. way. Yeah, yeah, that's that's what I did. I basically like every every viewing I did in this first week, I tried to look out for different aspects and angles. And uh, yeah, the more I talked about it with like with the people who have seen it, um, the more I was I was down on that movie. But yeah, people who want to check out the review, uh, it's on Instagram. So uh, get over there and check out the review. Okay, um, Luis. Thank you so much for stopping by and talking about your Babu Freak print. Um, I really, really enjoyed it. And we will talk soon probably in a long interview one um, because you said you wanted to test this out. And this is, I think, a good test. And I think you passed easily. So we could do a long one. (laughs) Okay, thank you. Bye. Thank you.